Beneath the thick veil of swirling clouds, Venus hides a world unlike any other. Imagine a place where temperatures soar high enough to melt lead, where the pressure would crush a submarine, and where the landscape is a sea of volcanic plains stretching for hundreds of kilometers. This is Venus, a planet shaped by violent eruptions, alien geology, and mystery. For centuries, Venus remained largely hidden. Aside from a few haunting, grainy photos captured by Soviet landers, no one had truly seen what lay beneath its toxic skies. That is, period, until Magellan. On May 4, 1989, Space Shuttle Atlantis lifted off from Kennedy Space Center. On board was an extraordinary payload. The first deep space probe launched by a space shuttle. It was called Magellan, and it was bound for Venus. Its mission would forever change how we see our closest planetary neighbor. Over four years, the Magellan spacecraft orbited Venus, using advanced radar to map 98% of the planet's surface with a resolution of up to 100 meters. The images it sent back didn't just impress, they shocked. They rewrote our understanding of Venus entirely. Join me as we explore the remarkable story of NASA's Magellan mission and the stunning secrets it uncovered beneath Venus's clouds. Before we look at the images, we need to understand just how little we knew. In 1974, Mariner 10 gave us our first look at Venus's cloud cover as it flew past on its way to Mercury. A year later, the Soviet Venera program did something even more daring. It landed probes on the surface. They transmitted eerie images of a desolate, rocky terrain before being destroyed by the crushing atmospheric pressure within hours. Their cameras could only see a few meters in any direction. Then came Pioneer Venus in the late 70s. It used radar to map parts of Venus, but its resolution was so low that trying to study Venus with it was like trying to use Google Maps when you can't zoom in closer than 75 kilometers. Entire cities would appear as single pixels. To make matters worse, Pioneer Venus never even mapped the poles. NASA wanted more, much more. They wanted to see everything, the landforms, the tectonic features, evidence of erosion, volcanic activity, even gravity variations. So they built Magellan. Magellan wasn't just any spacecraft. It carried three groundbreaking innovations that made this mission historic. First, it used a technique called synthetic aperture radar. Because visible light can't penetrate Venus's clouds, Magellan had to use radar waves. It took multiple radar readings from different angles using a powerful 3.7 meter antenna, borrowed and adapted from earlier missions like Voyager. These readings were stitched together to create highly detailed surface images. That simulated the clarity of a much larger antenna. Second, Magellan used a polar orbit. This means it circled the planet from north to south, allowing it to slowly scan the entire surface as Venus rotated beneath it. Each orbit took three hours and 15 minutes, and over six mapping cycles, Magellan captured both topographic and gravitational data. By the end of its first mapping cycle in May 1991, Magellan had already exceeded expectations by mapping over 83% of Venus. By the time the third cycle ended, it had covered 98% of the surface at resolutions as sharp as 100 to 250 meters, sharper than anything we'd ever seen. Altogether, Magellan sent back 150 gigabytes of data, more than all previous NASA planetary missions combined. That may not sound like much today, but in the early 1990s, it was revolutionary. Then came the gravity mapping. After its imaging mission, Magellan began transmitting a continuous radio signal to Earth. 
subtle changes in the signal, caused by the spacecraft's acceleration and the Doppler effect, allowed scientists to measure gravitational variations and learn about the interior structure of Venus. The results were breathtaking. The radar images were ten times sharper than anything seen before and 250 times better than Pioneer Venus. For the first time, we saw Venus clearly. Instead of vague smears and outlines, Magellan revealed an alien world in exquisite detail. Its mosaics took years to compile, but they gave us our first true portrait of Earth's sister planet. One of the first things you notice, the lack of impact craters. Compared to the Moon or Mars, Venus appears nearly untouched. Across the entire planet, Magellan identified only 940 craters. It's shockingly few. Most small meteors burn up in Venus's thick atmosphere before ever reaching the ground. And even the ones that do leave behind unique, flower-like patterns made from molten debris. Take the craters Danilova. Aglaonice and Saskia. And around each impact site, you'll find pale yellow, blanket-like formations. These are called ejecta, material blasted out during the collision. But on Venus, they flow like lava because of the extreme surface heat, forming sinewy trails that resemble petals. In places like Adivar Crater, the winds generated by impact debris sweeping through the dense atmosphere form strange horseshoe shapes, which don't exist anywhere else in the solar system. Some craters, like the enormous 90-kilometer-wide Adams Crater, have ejected that stretch up to 600 kilometers away. This could be molten rock that stayed liquid far longer than it would on any other rocky planet. What does this all mean? that Venus is geologically young. These few commas, well-preserved craters, suggest the entire surface is only 300 to 500 million years old. A geological blink of an eye. Something must have wiped the slate clean. And the prime suspect? Volcanoes. More than 85% of Venus is covered in volcanic rock. Magellan revealed thousands of volcanic structures from giant shield volcanoes, to pancake domes made of thick lava, to vast plains of overlapping lava flows that stretch for hundreds of kilometers. Pancake domes, for example, are around 65 kilometers wide, but only a few hundred meters tall. They formed from slow, vicus lava that oozed out and then shrank back slightly as it cooled, creating cracks and pits on the surface or consider the colossal shield volcanoes like Sapasmons and Matmons. They tower over the plains and resemble volcanoes found in Hawaii, like Mauna Loa, except the Venusian versions are often larger and shaped by different forces. Matmons stands 8,000 meters tall, rivaling Mount Everest. And here's where it gets really exciting. In 2023, Researchers analyzing old Magellan data noticed changes on Mart Mons. Lava had erupted during the mission itself in 1991. This was the first concrete evidence of active volcanism on Venus. There's more. Venus has these strange geological features called coronae, circular formations hundreds of kilometers across. They're created when hot material from the mantle pushes up against the crust lifting it until it collapses back in. These are like scars, left behind by massive bubbles of magma, rising from deep within the planet. Unlike Earth, Venus doesn't have tectonic plates that move and recycle the crust. Instead, period, the entire surface acts like a stagnant lid, deforming in place. Magellan showed over 500 of these coronae spread across the planet each one a monument to Venus's fiery interior. And that lack of plate tectonics? It might be why Venus became a hellish greenhouse. On Earth, 
Our moving plates help trap and store carbon by pushing oceanic rocks into the mantle. This process regulates temperature and keeps the planet habitable. Venus has no such recycling mechanism. Heat and carbon build up over time until the crust becomes unstable, leading to catastrophic resurfacing events. We believe the last of these happened around 300 million years ago. And it could happen again. Another mystery Magellan uncovered were the tesserae, highly deformed, tile-like landscapes found mostly in Venus's highlands. They're the oldest surfaces on the planet, dating back over 750 million years. We still don't fully understand how they formed, but they may hold clues about Venus's ancient climate and possibly its lost oceans. The Venera 15 and 16 missions saw hints of these formations, but it was Magellan that revealed them in stunning detail. Alpha Regio is one such region, a jumbled field of twisted, folded rock that looks like nothing on Earth. Perhaps the most stunning discovery of all came in the Aphrodite Terra region. Magellan captured two images of the same spot, one from 1990 and one from eight months later. In the second image, something had changed. A bright, flow-like feature had appeared likely the result of a landslide, or even a Venus quake. This was the first evidence of tectonic or seismic activity on another rocky planet besides Earth. On October 13, 1994, Magellan's mission came to a dramatic end. The spacecraft was deliberately sent into Venus's atmosphere, collecting data all the way down until it was destroyed by the intense heat and pressure. It had spent four years unveiling a hidden world, and what it revealed still shapes our understanding of Venus to this day. But the story isn't over. In the coming years, NASA's new missions, Veritas and Da Vinci, will pick up where Magellan left off. Veritas will orbit Venus, searching for active volcanoes and measuring heat coming from the surface. Da Vinci will plunge into the planet's atmosphere studying its chemical makeup and searching for signs of past water. Together, they'll help us answer questions that Magellan raised but couldn't resolve. Was there ever liquid water on Venus? Could it have supported life? And how did it become such an inferno? Perhaps, in understanding Venus, its violent history, its searing atmosphere, its tortured crust, we'll also understand something vital about our own planet's future. If you enjoyed this journey to Venus, stick around. We have more deep dives into the solar system's most fascinating mysteries coming soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next transmission.